Hi folks, I'm Mr. Fullerton and today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about vertical circular motion. Our objectives are going to be to analyze and solve problems involving objects moving in vertical circles. So to begin with, objects moving in vertical circles typically don't move at a constant speed, so really it's not quite uniform circular motion. However, given small variations in speed, we can use the tools that we've uh, developed for uniform circular motion to analyze these situations as well. So let's talk about a roller coaster in a loop. You've been upside down on a roller coaster and you don't fall out. Why not? Well, to understand this, we'll have to look at vertical circular motion. At the bottom of the loop in your cart, as you go around the circle, the free body diagram for you would look like mg, your weight, pulling down, and the normal force, the cart, the track on the cart, pushing up. If we analyzed this using Newton's second law, the net force in the centripetal direction, or toward the center of the circle, must be equal to fn, that points toward the center of the circle, the normal force, minus your weight, mg. Now what you feel when you're on these rides is the normal force, what's pushing back up on you, which is why on the bottom of the roller coaster, you actually feel like you're a little bit heavier. If we rearrange this equation for the normal force, well, let's remember that this is always equal to mac or mv squared over r. Rearranging for the normal force then, the normal force is equal to mv squared over r plus mg. And if you look at that, this is your weight, so there's your normal weight, and you have this additional term where the faster you're going and the smaller the radius, the more you're going to feel that. That's what we call g-forces. If you feel just mg, you are feeling one g-force. If you would feel twice mg as you add these together, you would be feeling two g-forces. If mv squared over r plus mg was equal to 8mg, you would be feeling eight g-forces. You'd feel like you're being pushed down or compressed into the bottom of your seat. Looking at the top of the loop, now our free body diagram has gravity, your weight, mg, pulling you down. And the normal force now points toward the center of the circle. So Newton's second law in the centripetal direction, f net c, is now equal to mg plus fn. And all of that is equal to mac, or mv squared over r. Again, rearranging for the normal force, since that's what you feel, the normal force is equal to mv squared over r minus mg. So in this case, you're actually going to be feeling less than you would have felt previously. And as long as this normal force is positive, as long as your velocity is high enough that mv squared over r is greater than mg, there is still some positive normal force pushing on you, pushing on your seat. When that force goes away, when there's no longer a normal force, the cart would be uh, no longer in contact with the rails and you would start to fall. So by going faster and faster, you keep that term higher and higher, therefore you don't fall out of your seat. What's really happening is it's your inertia that keeps you going. As you turn in a circle, you want to keep going in a straight line. The track itself is applying a normal force, pushing you toward the center of the circle, which is allowing you to move in a circle. Let's see if we can't look at this in the case of a couple of problems. In this experiment, a rubber stopper is attached to one end of a string that is passed through a plastic tube before weights are attached to the other end. The stopper is whirled in a horizontal circular path. So this isn't really vertical circular motion, but it's a good example of how we could do this sort of analysis. What would happen to the radius of the circle if the student whirls the stopper at a greater speed without changing the balancing weights? Well, the balancing weights are what's giving you that force. So your centripetal force must remain the same, and that's equal to mv squared over r. If v goes up, then r must also go up to concentrate. So the radius would increase. Now for B, the rubber stopper is now whirled in a vertical circle at the same speed. On the vertical diagram, draw and label vectors to indicate the direction of the weight as Fg and the direction of the centripetal force at the position shown. Well, the weight is easy. Gravity always pulls down 
So that's mg or capital F sub g, as it's asking in the problem. In the direction of the centripetal force, well, centripetal means center seeking. It must point toward the center of the circle. So there, Fc is our centripetal force toward the center of the circle. Let's take a look at one more problem. In this experiment, we have a 0.028 kilogram stopper attached to one end of a string. It's whirled overhead in a horizontal circle with a radius of one meter. The stopper completes 10 revolutions in 10 seconds. So again, not a vertical problem, but a good way to look at these tools again. Determine the speed of the whirling stopper. Well, the speed is going to be the distance it travels divided by the time it takes. If it takes 10 revolutions times 2 pi r, the radius of the circle, in some time t, that's 10 revolutions times 2 pi times our radius of 1 meter over our total time of 10 seconds, that's just going to be 6.28 or 2 pi meters per second. Calculate the magnitude of the centripetal force on the whirling stopper. Well, centripetal force is mass times centripetal acceleration, or mv squared over r. Our mass is 0 0.028 kilograms. Our velocity is 6.28 meters per second squared, and our radius is 1 meter, which gives us a total centripetal force of about 1.11 newtons. Hope this was helpful. Have a great day.